Hi, I'm a helpful Southern California Honda person, and recently we've been doing random acts of helpfulness, like donating shoes to children in need and helping a music therapy facility with new instruments. And we can help you too with a great deal on an award-winning Honda, like the all-new and completely redesigned Accord, a car and driver 10 vest a record 32 times. Click the dealer locator link to find a dealer near you and go to SoCalHondaDealers.com to suggest a random act of helpfulness for someone you know. Car and driver, January 2018. Blog Talk Radio. Hello, folks. How are you are doing? <clears throat> Boy, starting off a little rough here. Hope you're doing good this morning on the Danny Tisdale Show. And it's brought to you by our folks at Harlem World Radio. It's a Harlem World podcast, and as we do just about every Saturday, is bring you great guests, Let's talk about great things that's happening in and out of the world of Harlem. And today's not any different. It deals with a little history, a little contemporary flavor, and of course, uh, all things that are in the history in the world of Harlem. Well, uh, to keep you connected to us, uh, check out our platforms at harlemworldmag.com. Also, check us out on Facebook at facebook.com backslash hwmag. Also, don't forget Twitter at twitter.com backslash hwmag and all those other social platforms that you're on. Just put in Harlem World Magazine and you'll find us and you'll find the content and everything that you want to know when it comes to the world of Harlem. Ah, let's talk a few minutes about what's happening on the trending side of Harlem World. And uh, one of those great things is uh, checking out our, what's trending on the site. What's trending on the site is a great, 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 great fundraiser for Michelle Cruz. That's right, uh, happening in East Harlem. Also, we've got a great historical piece with uh, um, – Marcus Garvey, and a rare, rare, rare recording of him speaking. Of course, uh, he had uh, some of his final years in Harlem on 135th Street and 7th Avenue. Um, uh, What else is going on? Uh, We also have a great kind of updated story on the business side regarding Old Navy and the store on 125th Street and how Gap Uh, It's doing in general when it comes to uh, some of their business. So uh, we hope you are listening intently. And again, check us out at HarlemWorldMag.com, our main source for Harlem content. And check out all the things that we are talking about across our platforms. And speaking of our platforms and speaking of Harlem World, uh, in the world of Harlem, we have a special guest today, Harriet Kimbrough Hamilton, and she is author of Daddy's Scrapbook, Henry Krim- Kimbrough of the Negro Baseball League, A Daughter's Perspective about her father, uh, Harry Kimbrough, who, of course, played in Harlem. She is a former athletic director of Fisk University. Dr. Hamilton's father was honored on BET in Essence shortly after he passed in 1999. Uh, Ms. Kimbrough is an associate professor of Tennessee State University in Nashville. During her athletic career, uh, Ms. Kimbrough served as head coach of various sports and athletic directors, as we mentioned, at Fisk University. She also served as a professor for Stillman College in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Of course, my favorite team is Alabama University. Uh, The author uh, has also chaired the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship Committee and served on the ABA-USA Committee that selected the 1988 USA Olympic Gold Medal Women's Basketball Team. Yay! Olympics. She has received awards from the Women's Sports Foundation, the Association of Girls and Women in Sports, Uh, And, of course, uh, awards from Fisk University, Temple University, uh, and um, and many, many more. I I want to speak to her, so I'm going to uh, save our post on the site for you to find out more about her. And we want to welcome Miss Harriet Kimbrough Hamilton. Miss Hamilton, thank you for being with us. Yes, how are you? Thank you for having me. I'm doing fantastic. 
Now, thank you for being with us on this uh, Saturday, and uh, congratulations on your, your book. Thank you. It was a labor of love for over 11-plus years. 11 years? Uh, it's not even on my hit list, but why did it take so long? Um, getting started and, um, you know, one of the reasons I did this is because my mother gave me, uh, a, not a challenge, but she told me to do something with my dad's scrapbook. He kept a scrapbook of his playing days in the Negro League when he played with the Baltimore Elites, when he played with the New York Yankees. Um, he also played with the Birmingham Black Barons. Right. Uh, so he kept a scrapbook. Wow, it was fascinating. So, so in the scrapbook, is it? Um, I, I know some traditional scrapbooks are photos and cutouts of some of the writings. Did he also have other material in there? Uh, uh, um, uh, winning certificates, anything like that? Well, he didn't really receive any certificates, um, but all of the above. What you just said. A lot of stats, which is uh, which was helpful in me really getting all of his stats together. And when I really looked at it, I said he just wasn't a typical player. He was pretty good. Um, he <laughs> <laughs> he bat his batting average. He played for about 16 years. Out of okay. the 16 years, nine years, uh, he batted above 300 plus. Wow. Wow. And so that was uh I knew then. I don't I didn't know a whole lot about baseball, but I knew that much. That when you bat <laughs> three hundred plus, uh, you're just not the average Joe Blow. You're pretty good. You know what to do when you get to the plate. And so it was that statistics that helped me uh put his resume together, his athlete baseball resume together to get him into the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. And that is his, right. is his right. biggest award is getting into the Tennessee State, Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame, the state of Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. Well, and that's that's a, a huge award. And, and you know, uh, I certainly give you and him, of course, his uh, uh, props. And I can just imagine what he – uh, went through during those uh, 16 years of, uh, of of playing. So the scrapbook is what gave you the idea for the book. But do you remember when you were growing up any of um, those days, years of him playing and traveling with him, or did you stay at home? How did that – how well, was that when you were growing up? When he retired from Negro League Baseball, which was 1953 – that was the year I was born. Not trying to give my age, but of course you figure it out. The math. Hey. Well, we're we're all <laughs> terrible at math, so I think you're like 21. So that's good. Um, but <laughs> he continued to play locally um, oh, okay. because by that time the league had kind of disbanded. Uh, right. You know, Jay Robinson had broken into the uh, into the league, Major League Baseball, league. Yeah. and so. Uh, the fans began to follow him, and uh, they they weren't coming to um, the Negro League games like they used games, to in the past. Right. Interesting. Uh, Interesting. So, uh, yeah, so he kept playing locally at the ballparks and all of the old players. You know how old basketball players and all of those keep playing basketball way after uh, they right finish after playing, the, trying their, to get it out of right, their system. Right, the height of their career. Right. Yes. And so he kept playing. So that is what I saw, but I didn't give it a second thought because I was just a little kid. When we went to the parks, um, we just wanted to go to the playground. That was it. Right. We just wanted to be play. a little kid. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then we would run to him after the game was over. That was the highlight. That was the highlight <laughs> of the event. We were just running on the field and going down to the dugout and then that sort of thing. So I really didn't give it a second thought. And I can't even remember me saying, wow, my dad plays baseball and he's pretty good because mm. I don't even remember watching him really play um, and paying attention to Interesting. it. Interesting. Right, yeah. right. Um, it wasn't until, and I didn't know until I was in high school. I was about a mm. senior and uh, he had uh, his own cab company and I would go down uh, 
to the cab company, and I met a fellow player, Bush McCord, and he came up to me. He said, did you know your dad was a heck of a ball player? I said, who are we talking about? And uh, he, he said, your father was a professional baseball player. Uh, hmm. No, he just played around in the league. And he said, uh-uh. So my dad never talk, talked about it because he was that kind, that kind of person. Um, huh. And so when I went to him, he said, yeah, I played a little bit. And that was his answer. And so, so he really thought, wasn't the kind of guy that blowed no, his own horn, that blew his own at horn. At all. At all. Yeah. Didn't even know he was a professional baseball player. And hmm. and he said, yeah, I played a little bit. And that's when my curiosity, I was always a curious kid, uh, wanted to know more. And when I decide I want to know more, I usually do what I need to do. So I began to dig in and began Find to out. ask him questions. And so and that's how that went. So, and, and uh, Ms. Hamilton, you you were living in Tennessee at that time? The family. Yes, I grew up in Nashville, Tennessee, and yeah, I was in high school, and then I went to college here at Fisk University. So four years I spent here in Nashville, in the city, and so just got bits and pieces. It wasn't until after he passed, my mother presented the the uh, book, um, the scrapbook, and nobody, my brothers, my sister, no one ever saw that ever. And my older brother is uh, Larry Kimbrough, and he's about 70 years old. Uh, and he said, I've never seen this. I've never seen this. So I don't know where that scrapbook was, but my mom knew it. And so after he passed, that's when she presented me the scrapbook. And I took it home, and, of course, it was like candy. Like, what is this? And it was fascinating. It was fascinating. Um, pictures of Josh Gibson. There's a picture that has a note on it from Roy Campanella that says, I won't be there to help you all with the championship, but I wish you the best of luck. By that time, he was in Mexico because they made just a lot of more money, you know, a lot, lots more playing in the Caribbean's full time. And so Campanella had left the Negro League and now was in Mexico uh, and in those places playing. And so I thought, this is just totally another world. I felt like I was transported to this world. Just uh, articles about Josh Page, uh, Josh Gibson, uh, Satchel, uh, on and on and on and on, and all his stats, and articles about him um, from the Baltimore area. Um, and so I began to put pieces together and that's when I, my mother said, you got to do something with this book. And it took me a while to figure it out. I'm like, well, so the first thing was I got him in the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. And I thought, okay, I've done something with the book. But then, you know, when you, you know something needs to be done and you're not finished, and you get that feeling and it just doesn't go away. And I kept having that feeling and then it just came on me. And I, I always say it was the... The Spirit of God telling me, uh, you're not finished. You need to do this. And uh, so I knew I wasn't going to rest in peace until I, I did it. Plus, a lot of the books that are out there, which is reason number two I wrote it, is because they all say that my father was a loner, he was evil, he was mean, he was all these terrible things. And, of course, you know, a little girl who uh, grew up to be a big girl, uh, who adored her father, didn't see him that way. And maybe he was a little bit like that. He was hard-nosed. He's a very hard-nosed person. He uh, didn't have he didn't have anything to do with nonsense, horseplay. He just wasn't like that. He's always serious. And in a way, I'm kind of like that, too. So I understand it about business, and that's it. So a lot of them didn't get along with him, and several of them said we just didn't like him. And uh, he was just mean and just evil. My father might have been a little mean, but he wasn't an evil person at all. He's quite the opposite. So it was I, I had to write the real story from his daughter perspective of the man who my father truly was, uh, because we all evolve. And so that's the second reason why I wrote the book. Does that kind of make sense? Hello? 
Hello. Okay, did we get disconnected? Hello. Hello. Miss Hamilton. I'm back. <laughs> you missed the good part. When did I, I, I when heard did it I all. I don't know. I I think uh, you were talking about your father being hard nosed. Yes. Yes. So, so let me stop missed- you right there. I'm going to do a quick station ID. Don't move. Don't say anything. We <laughs> want to just let our listeners know they're listening to Harlem World Radio. We just had a little. Uh, technical difficulty. I, just, I think I've just lost more hair. Um, <laughs> and, uh, folks, we're glad you're listening and hope you are back with us. And we are just talking about Miss um, Harriet Kimbrough Hamilton's father, uh, who was, of course, Harry Kimbrough. And her book, Daddy's Scrapbook, Harry Kimbrough of the Nash, I'm sorry, the Negro Baseball League, A Daughter's Perspective. Sorry about that, Miss Kimbrough. We are back. And you were talking about, yes, what they said about your father being the black tie cob, uh, evil, all, you know, some pretty terrible yes. things. Where did yes. that come from? Um, well, my dad was only allowed to go to the sixth grade. He couldn't go past the sixth grade. And, of course, we know racism in the South was very cruel. Right. And harsh. So and he was born in Tennessee. He was born in Nashville, Tennessee, and okay. the school that he had to go to for blacks was 26 miles away. Mm. And there was a school near him, but he wasn't allowed to go to it because to of the issues. There. Yeah. So that ended his education, and mm. that haunted him for the rest of his life. So um, he always felt like I, I don't need to say a lot because people will know that I am only educated to the sixth grade. And my dad was the smartest man I ever, you know, knew. Um, Hmm. He just had a stigma about that. Of course, all of us, all his kids went to college. That was a, yeah, that's all, you know, there was no debate. Yeah, yeah, that's, we were all going to college. (laughs) Everything. I know we can laugh now, but I'm sure that that was no laughing matter. No, it wasn't. You didn't bring C's home, you, and right. you don't bring too many B's home. Uh, right. Everything needs to look like an A. So he had a problem with that, and so he felt like, particularly in the South, that people took um, advantage of blacks who had a limited education, and he saw mm-hmm. people get gypped and uh, mm-hmm. things stolen from them. So he just took on the demeanor of very hard nose. I'm not going to say too much to you. Uh, but I'm going to figure it out. But I'm going to be right. very quiet and figure it out myself. Right. So he never really had a conversation with anybody. If he had something to say, he said it. If he didn't have anything to say, he didn't say anything. He would say it, All right? Yep. That's just that. Yeah, I like a guy like that or anybody like that because I know when I played football and there were men or women who uh, I met along the way who played volleyball or whatever the sport was, they were pretty intense on the court, on the field. You know, if yes. they had that chip on their shoulder for whatever reason. But I can understand yes. that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. But that's that's the reason why he had that chip on his shoulder and never really let go of it. I don't care. I mean, he had his own business. <laughs> he ran two businesses. Um, mm-hmm. That sort of thing. I mean, so uh, that was just something that happened, you know, in his childhood because uh, mm-hmm. he had to go to work couldn't do anything yeah. else after that. He, he had a family, to school. Yeah. So he went to work and uh, had some terrible uh, experiences. Uh, one of them that's in the book was uh, when he was working, he worked with the uh, with a guy named Mr. Bird. Mr. Bird had two sons, and he owned a filling station, as my dad say. You know, I always like to say that because it's not called that anymore. But, right. uh, <laughs> gas station. Right. Gas station, filling station. I'm like, filling station? What is that? <laughs> What's that? So right. I like to say that, filling station. And um, so they used to beat him up and call him all kind of names, racist names. Mr. Bird was an mm-hmm. Irishman, and mm-hmm. uh, he told his boys, you know, you better leave him alone. And so a lot of people think my dad got strong 
by playing baseball, growing up playing baseball. Uh-uh. My father got strong because he he told me, and this is from his mouth, that he decided he was going to beat up both of those boys. Mm. And uh, he trained and uh, he did, he got a jump rope and uh, he did the ladder, wow. got some haystacks and put a ladder across it and went across the ladder and got strong upper body strength. Mm. So one day... Um, he said they came and and was picking on them and beating them up and he uh, he beat both of them up and he had no more problems out of them ever again. So he this is a man that was quite um, determined about something. Mm. When he had something in his mind, he did it, mm. and uh, you know c- took a lot uh, growing up during those times. And he had a temper. He had a very bad temper. Uh, so he he sounds like a person that when he put his mind to something, uh, yes. it usually got done. It did. It always got done. I never seen yeah. him fail at anything. When he says something, he means it. That's it. So I, I, this may not be fair, Miss Hamilton, but uh, because I haven't given you the question, you know, ahead of time, but I'm just you know wondering uh, what can. Uh, readers, men, maybe especially uh, maybe women, what can we all learn, uh, black or white, maybe more specifically as black folks, about your father's story and the book? Well, I say the first lesson was uh, determination and uh, being determined and being disciplined as a person. Mm. Um mm. The major story is a father who raised his kids with uh, a lot of values and stuck with it and and really didn't give them an option to be educated, an option to be good people, an option to decide whether they were going to work hard or not work hard or be lazy. That was never an option in our household. And the third lesson, um, my mother is Cuban. And so um, so I am of two cultures. Mm. And my mother experienced uh, just as much racism from black folks um, as she did from white folks. And the lesson there is that when um, you're faced against odds, um, you you can overcome anything. And my mother was a Christian. Of course, I'm a Christian also because mm. she was a Catholic. Of course, you know most uh, right. uh, yeah, Spanish pe- speaking people are Catholic. Spanish, right. right? Yes. And so she drew. She had she had more strength than my dad because my dad would just go off. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> it, it didn't take okay. It didn't take much. He was done with it. And but my mom took on a lot with Mm. so much inner strength I've never seen before. And to me, she was the strongest of the two. But the Mm. two made such a good together in terms of raising kids, running businesses. My mother was a teacher. uh, Mm. So she was a teacher. And so... um, Interesting. Yes. And so I saw life growing up from two different cultures, which I love both cultures, but I also see what people can do to other people. And uh, that made me very keenly aware of being able to accept everybody because you don't know where people come from Um, and making a judgment on people based on color skin, type of hair they have, all of that. And uh, I just learned a very, we all did, we learned a very good lesson in being very, very, um, acceptable, you know, accept everybody and for what for who they are, not what you think they are. So my mother was uh, just an outstanding individual. Um, everybody that meets her, she, she's never met a stranger. She's that type of person. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so my dad was on the other side. My mother was on the other side. So we had we had a great balance growing up. So the lesson yeah, it sounds being, like it. Yeah, the lesson being that I think we're more becoming more of a country of cultures where uh, there are several people that uh, decide to marry 
out of race or, you know, across race, uh, color lines, and we are becoming a people of color today more so than anything mm-hmm. else. And so that's the lesson um, that we all learn, my brother, my brothers, and my sister. And we could go anywhere. We're not. We weren't afraid to go anywhere because our world was just not. 312 Joanna Avenue, which is where we grew up. Right. Our world was New York. Our world was uh, Havana, Cuba. Our world was it was it was it was a much bigger world. They brought us up to see the whole world, not just the uh, the block or where we grew up at. That was the greatest gift of all for all of us. That is such a fan. No, I'm sorry. I, I, I hate to cut you off, but we're we're down to our last couple of minutes, and I just wanted okay. to say that's a fantastic story, and uh, I, I'm loving what I hear about the book. And before we um, uh, finish our our conversation, can you give folks we we're gonna post this on the site uh, an hour or so after we get finished. There's gonna be a link to uh, the book and obviously to the radio show. But if our listeners would like to follow you and stay in touch with you and um, uh, connect, do you have a Facebook or website or any other yes, links that uh, they my can stay in contact has, with you? Yeah, my dad has a Facebook page that I put that together, is. and it's all about him and his career. Um, and it's Henry Kimbrough, 12 at gmail dot com. Can you give that one more time? It's Henry Kimbrough twelve. Now that's that's his uh um that's his site. His number uh okay. he has if you put in Henry Kimbrough his Facebook will come up. He's also he also has his own Facebook page but uh we have a Gmail that is uh uh, what I just said, Henry Kimbrough. If they, you know, have questions or want to contact me, Fantastic. that's the email. Fantastic. Well, and I wanted to, of course, thank you for uh, being on the show. And sorry thank for that happy. little hiccup with that technical difficulties. And um, really, really love the conversation. And folks, don't forget to check out the book, Daddy's Scrapbook, Henry Kimbrough of the Negro Baseball League, A Daughter's Perspective. And thank you, Miss uh, Kimbrough Hamilton, for thank you being for on me. the show. And I'll send you a link to the show, and we'll uh, reach back to you. Thanks again for being on the show, and we really, really look forward to hearing more about the, the story of your father and uh, his life and, and your continual work. Thank you very much for being on the show, Ms. Kimbrough. Thank you. All right. Take care. You too. Well, folks, uh, you've just uh, heard another uh, great uh, show and another uh, great guest who uh, – it's been on the show, and I want to apologize again for that technical difficulties that we had uh, halfway through the show, and I'm glad we were able to reconnect and get back on track uh, with that little drama in the beginning. But again, uh, check out the book, buy the book, uh, support the history, support our history, and um, it's American history. Uh, thanks again for being on the show, and look for us next Saturday for uh, another great guest and to talk about all the things that happen in the world of part. Thank you again for listening, and I will, of course, talk to you soon. Bye-bye. I've wanted to be a cowboy as long as I can remember. I love the animals, I love the land, I love the challenge that nature and the economy, everything throws at you on a daily basis. Loving what you do. Being able to make a living doing something you enjoy, that's, that's my definition of success. I'm in it because it's in my blood. Whatever drives you, wherever you are on your journey, whatever you're in it for, we're in it together. LinkedIn, you're closer than you think.